Hi and welcome to Squeaks and Nibbles channel. It's me, Lucy, and I'm going to talk to you about another awesome type of pet frog today. It's the Pac-Man or Horned Frog. First thing I'm going to do is scoop that Horned Frog up for you to have a look at because interestingly, there are I think about eight different species of horned frog of which three are really fairly common in the pet trade and it's not always obvious when you buy them which one you've got so I shall let you have a little look at mine now mine was labelled an ornate horned frog and I'm pretty confident that's correct but if any other frog fans want to correct me in the comments section Please do feel free because he's a slightly darker pattern than a lot of them that I've seen. Now you may have noticed I'm doing something slightly strange. I'm putting on rubber gloves. That's for him and not for me. I actually really don't like wearing these things. They're itchy and sticky and it's so hot today. Um, but yes, so that he doesn't absorb any of the nasty toxins and chemicals on my skin. I'm going to pop these on, pick him up so you can have a little look at him. He's an awesome guy doesn't like being handled so I'm going to do it fairly quickly. I'll give you a look and then we'll pop him back in his enclosure. Okay, he's the gorgeous little guy. I'll find you some lovely um, b-roll footage and pop it in there as well but here he is i won't let go too much because he's a bit of a jumper despite being a round little thing so that really was a very brief look wasn't it he wasn't very happy about being picked up he's hot and bothered and he's a grumpy little chap but he is very cute and interesting and one of the reasons that they make quite good pets for some people is quite simply that they don't require a lot of interaction. If you're looking for a pet that you can occasionally admire, feed a few times a week, you will need to spray down the enclosure. But basically, that would rather be left alone for the most part and doesn't require taming down and things like that. A Pac-Man frog is a great choice. Some of them I have known people who've had them and they've been okay with being handled. He's not a big fan. He is only a baby though. He looks quite big when you're holding him and he was teeny when we brought him home. I'll see if I've got some photos I can share of that too for you. Um, but he's only about four or five months old at the moment. So really still just a baby. We keep him currently in essentially plastic tote. Again, I'll show you a bit of video of that. He is, um, he's in an area that's fairly deep substrate because they like to burrow into the ground. And he's got big water dish because he spends most of his nights in there. And that's where he likes to have quite a lot of his peas. And, and we've also got a little cork bark den that he can hide inside. And he does choose to do that occasionally, but for the most part, he'll go into the middle of the enclosure and bury himself down. Once he's a little bit bigger, we will move him up into, into one of the exoterras or habistat enclosures that have the grill over the top, which means that we'll be able to give him the option of having a bit of UV. Um, we'll give him plenty of places to shade and hide, but also the option of coming out into a bit of light during the day if he decides that he wants to. These frogs are often kept by people in quite sort of dark enclosures and actually they're pretty okay with it, but it's good to give your pets the option of having lots of different enriching places to go and explore if you're able to do so. Pac-Man frogs are easy to feed as adults and a little bit tricky as babies. When we picked him up because we were experienced amphibian owners, um, he was given to us fairly young um, with very clear instructions on how to feed him if he was not not keen to take anything um we actually didn't need to do any of that but straight away 
he was very keen to uh, to munch down anything that could fit into his mouth. And for Pac-Man frogs, what you want is basically suitably sized bugs, insects, wiggly worms. They, <laughs> if they can eat it, they will. Once they're adults, you can even feed them things like pinky mice. They they really are quite happy to you know if it's if it's alive or <laughs> been alive, they'll take it. You also want to make sure that you don't overfeed them. Very easy to do with this sort of frog. So just have a look at a lot of pictures online of what they tend to, to look like in terms of appearances. And you'll, you'll see pretty quickly when they're getting a bit too, too hefty. Um, he lives in my husband's study rather than in my reptile room that you can see behind us here because they do like it slightly cooler than a lot of the other animals that we keep. The substrate needs to be damp, but not sopping wet. I do have a small drainage layer built into the bottom, which just helps to make that easier. So it's just clay balls, a single line of them along the bottom, and then some mesh and then some substrate on the top. And that helps to, to keep the humidity high, but the actual soil from getting sodden, which isn't good for them and can cause some sort of skin problems. And you do need to regularly clean out where they burrow because they sit in their own waist. And again, that can that could get uncomfortable for them quite quickly. The misting that you do with the tank and the water that you put in their bowl needs to be treated with Reptisape or a similar product in order for them not to be impacted by the chemicals that we have in our drinking water, which makes it good for us to drink, bad for them to sit in. Baby Pac-Man frogs are adorable but they can be tricky and not just feeding like we talked about earlier but also in terms of eating their own substrate so a lot of people when they get a baby pac-man frog they will just put it onto a uh, kitchen towel base so they can't accidentally consume the substrate when they're eating their bugs they hugely open their mouths when they take it in and, and it can end up sort of sucking in all sorts of things that are nearby so don't put pretty little decorative stones and things like in it. it needs to be really bare when they're babies what we did as well is he is always tongue fed and you hold the um, prey items slightly above their head so that they're opening upwards rather than down and across towards the soil and that seems to seems to be really helpful as well this is a very different sort of pet to a lot of things that we talk about on this channel and, and write about on the squeaks and nibbles website purely because they are so sedentary but it's really important to remember that just because they're sedentary during the day and they bury themselves into the burrow doesn't mean they still don't like to be able to have some space to explore and things to keep them entertained and busy. He's actually he's actually watching me now, so I'm gonna turn around the camera and take a bit of footage for